looking for that voltage and we're supposed to do this in AC sinusoidal steady state so that means phasor analysis so good starting point let's determine the operating frequency that's four radians per second so I'll start to write down some of the phasor quantities here 2 ohm resistor stays as it is do J omega L for an inductor so that's J8 ohms this device is half that so that's J4 ohms and our mutual inductance turns into a mutual impedance of J4 times one-half which is J2 ohms next thing we do is deal with our dotted devices so we introduce controlled sources according to the positive terminal pointing out I'll redraw this in a second but the po positive terminal is oriented on the same terminal as the dotted terminal so let me go ahead and redraw this circuit in its phasor form now eventually we need to identify the voltage values for these controlled sources and uh, normally what you do is identify the mesh currents in the circuit and then calculate or you know write down those voltage values um, in order to minimize the number of meshes I'm going to do a quick source transformation on that chunk and that gives us 8 amps times 2 ohms so we have a 16 volt source in series with a 2 ohm resistor let's go ahead and swap that in now I can identify my mesh currents. Call that I1 and call that I2. So on the leftmost controlled source, the current entering the other dotted terminal is I2. Multiply that. by my mutual impedance that gives me my voltage value on the other device we have a current entering the other dotted terminal of I1 so this is J2 times I1 now the fact that we have the open circuit connection right there means that I2 is zero and that has some implications for the rest of the circuit the first one is that the current through J4 is always zero so that means we've got zero volts right there so this piece can be replaced by a short circuit so the only thing remaining then is this dependent source so if we note the polarity mismatch we can write down that V is minus J to I1 coming back to the other mesh just a single mesh so that means we could write down I'll start here minus 16 plus 2 I1 bump into the positive sign first on the source so I then write down a plus and then the value of the voltage source plus J8 times I1 equals 0 but earlier we had noted that I2 is 0 so that part vanishes and collecting terms we have a 2 
and a J8 associated with I1. You can put 16 on the other side of the equation. So I1 is 16 over 2 plus J8, which is the same as 1.94 at minus 90s, I'm sorry, minus 76 degrees amps. Take that value, insert it right there. So we're taking this times minus J2. And I've kind of run out of space here. I think I could fit it in up on top. When you go through the calculation there, you should end up with 3.88 at minus 166 degrees volts. And we were looking for a time domain representation there. So that's the same thing as V of T is, and let me clear out some space to write. 3.88 is the amplitude. Cosine, we were at 4 radians per second. 4T minus 166 degrees volts.